pretty. It would never work. <laughs> and I said, okay. And I went home and I was thinking to myself, I'm going to prove her wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I dressed myself up in my brother's clothes, bound my chest with ace bandages <laughs> I I really went like all out. I I um I put all of my hair into a wig cap and then a baseball cap on top of that. And I took all my makeup off and I put brown makeup and coffee grounds for stubble on my face. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. And my mom was like super creeped out cuz she said I looked like my uncle Jimmy, my dad's brother. <laughs> Um, I was just like this scrawny, like little (laughs) dude looking thing. And I went to rehearsal incognito and I just sat in the back and I didn't say anything to anyone. And then they finally got to the point where they were lining people up. And the choreographer was assigning people different positions. And I just got in line. And he was going down the line saying, I want you to do this. You go here. Da, 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 da. And he got to me and he just paused. And he looked very confused. And, then, and it was, there was like a couple seconds. And then he goes, Ariel? And we just like all busted out laughing. And he was like, oh my God, I thought you were actually a man and I was like well I told you I could do it and then you know the director and everything she was she was floored and so I was the only girl dressing as a man in that show and I I made my way into the bar scene and it was absolutely you just terrific it was such a fun time Mm -hmm. and then when I wasn't a man in the bar scene I was a pregnant lady (laughs) Because I already had to stuff myself, so it just it just snowballed into this whole you know thing where I just I I didn't just want to be someone in the background that blended in. I wanted to just stand out, and I created a way for myself to do that in a way that made sense in the play. So yeah, that was my first <laughs> stage production <laughs> musical, Fiddler on the Roof. Wow. So you did Fiddler. Any other memorable roles on stage at this time? After Fiddler on the Roof, we did Lion, the Witch, in the Wardrobe, and I played the White Witch, which was mm. and is one of my all-time favorite roles that I've played. Um, did they make it a musical? Awesome. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah, they made it into a musical. Yeah. The director wrote... She was also the music director and the director of the show. She wrote a lot of the music along with my music teacher, So, yeah, they collaborated on it, and it was really cool. Is this your first villain? (laughs) That was my first villainous role, Mm. and I had no problem getting into it at all. (laughs) Um, Yeah, my mom, she was joking about how, like, oh, Ariel, you would be perfect for the witch. And at first I was like, how dare you? But then after I I read the character, and I'd seen the movies, of course, Mm. and I was like... And then I got into it, and I was like, yeah, I actually like this. It's not an insult. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so after playing the White Witch, um, I played Anne in Anne of Avonlea, which was not an evil role, but still fun. What's um, that show about? You've never seen Anne of Avonlea? No, I do. Oh, my gosh. Mm. <laughs> There's a whole series of novels written mm. about this little red-headed orphan <laughs> And, you know, she gets adopted by this older couple in the country, and she's this very bubbly, eccentric, but also very just strange person, but she brings, like, joy and and life back into their lives. Um, And it's just a really sweet story. And then, you know, she ends up falling in love with this guy who, you know, they would... They had been rivals in school, and he would always pick on her because he liked her, but she was just, like, this little ball of fire, and just, like, (laughs) it's a really cute story, so. And that was a musical, too? Mm -hmm. A musical as well. Anne and Gilbert fall in love in the end. Most people have seen it, so it's not much of a spoiler. (laughs) Okay, it's not a spoiler. Gotta check it out. And then after Anne of Avonlea, I was in Music Man. And I played a smaller role in that, but I needed a break after playing two leads Mm. back to back. And, um, yeah, so after Music Man is when I went to New York and then 
spending a year half in New York, coming back, jumped right into playing um, in The Wizard of Oz. I costumed a lot of that show Mm -hmm. and was working more behind the scenes. What made you decide to do that? I had, I loved doing costumes. Like even throughout the rest of the shows, I had been helping with costumes because I love dressing up, and I love yes, helping yeah. other people dress up. So yeah, I'd been I'd pretty much helped out with costumes for all of the other shows, but uh, Wizard of Oz, I helped out more with costumes because I wasn't I didn't technically have a role, but I also created roles for myself in that play. <laughs> I ended up being the legs under the house. The Wicked Witch of the East. I, oh I was the goodness. legs into the house. Because they were going to have a fake, like, stuffed pair of legs. And I was like, no, that looks stupid. Mm. I'll just put the stockings and the shoes on myself. So I did that. And then I was also one of the poppies, you know, in mm. the in the poppy field. Um, they had a bunch of little poppy girls. And I made their headbands and everything. Um, but then I ended up doing, like, this really cool, like, lyrical scarf dance that yeah just it evolved like very much like fiddler into this thing that was bigger than uh they originally planned for it but it it worked and she was like yeah you totally like took that and just made it your own and Mm -hmm. everyone loved it so Mm -hmm. yeah it was cool all right so obviously local theory you really don't get paid no unfortunately (laughs) It's the experience and the yeah. joy of acting, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you have gotten paid. And what was your first paid gig that you did? Well, if you go back to like my first first paid gig, um, I if you count singing, um, it was for older people at nursing homes. And I would get paid to go and sing and entertain them. Um, with someone who did like karaoke basically, but you know, she had a couple other ladies who would go and sing in the nursing homes. And then she met me and I was 15 at the time. And she was like, Oh, that'd be cute. The older people would love this and to hear you sing for them. So I got paid for that when I was 15. Yeah. So, um, but that was way, way before I had ever thought of pursuing a professional acting career. So my first commercial my first uh, paid commercial gig was for an onion company um called sunion s-u-n-i-o-n and they are supposedly tear-free onions so when you cut them you don't cry and you don't get like you know it doesn't burn your eyes and yeah so how did you get that uh, that was after I signed with my first agency. And how did you do that? Were you just knocking on doors, looking up agencies, saying, I'll try this one? Did you just go one after another? Well, I didn't know how to go about it at first, um, but I had a friend whose mom used to be a model, and she had been with one of the more well-established agencies in Tampa called Ben's Model and Talent, and she recommended me to them and I got an interview and went in basically just, you know, like a job interview, brought in what professional pictures I had, which were not very professional at the time. Um, but they liked me. They liked my look. Uh, they saw potential in me. And so I signed my contract with them and then I got my first professional headshots done and a couple months after that, I booked my first commercial gig, and I've been working for them ever since, along with several other agencies that I've signed with. So you had a few more commercials here and there. Any other acting roles in films or anything like that that happened around this time? Yeah, yeah. So I I did several other commercials, um, whether it was you know for hair or beauty products, you know cosmetics. Um, other things like that. And then that summer, after my first commercial gig, I started getting into film. And that's when, you know, I had my first experience, like, on an actual set as an extra. And I decided, you know, I really like this and I want to take it to the next level. And I want to do it, like, 
professionally. So yeah, then um, after meeting people on that first set, I just, from there, I, you know, made more connections and more friendships and just, just sort of just snowballed from there. Just, you know, meeting more people and joining, you know, casting groups and acting mm-hmm. groups on Facebook and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, and I just started auditioning for things and just start, started landing more roles. So it um, it always helps when you find a little bit of success, even though, like, you know, parts of it can seem, like, pointless and, like, I'm never going to get anywhere with this. Um, but you have those little moments of, like, yes, like this can work. Like I'm doing it, like it's happening and it's possible. <laughs> mm-hmm. Why do you think so many artists give up? It's definitely not for the faint of heart. Um, being a professional actor, there's, there's so many things that, um, <laughs> people don't really consider, uh, like just going into it. Uh, there's so much disappointment and rejection and that alone is more than people can handle sometimes. Um, you just kind of have to do your best and just leave it at that and move on. Um, you're never going to get every role. You're probably only going to get one out of ten that you audition for. Uh, and sometimes it can it can feel like one out of fifty It just, it depends. It's all about timing. And for me especially, it's about God's plan and his timing because his plan and his timing is, it's so much better. And he just, he sees the bigger picture. And ultimately he is the one who is going to give me and I believe everyone else the success they desire. Some people just don't give him credit for it. That brings me to this question, obviously. She's a Christian. Mm-hmm. Father's a pastor. Um, how much does your faith affect the roles you choose, the gigs you choose? It affects it a lot. Um, and I've had to struggle and come to terms with, you know, the fact that, yes, I'm an actor, but I'm a Christian first. And so there's this whole battle and tug of war between I'm playing this role but is it wrong for me to say or do this because you know sometimes it feels like it's going against what you believe and sometimes it does but also sometimes that you know there's there has to be a little bit of give and take and I've come to realize that it's not it's not all black and white um it's not just like if you if you say this or if you do this like as an actor like oh you're a bad christian it's a lot more complicated than that um and sometimes you know just for the t- sake of telling truthful and meaningful stories there are certain allowances that have to be made i would say um but yeah, there is that constant struggle of like, is this wrong for me to do this? Like, is this okay? Because there are certain situations I've found myself in that, you know, you would never, you would never find yourself in a situation like that if you weren't an actor. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it, it's hard, um, to, to describe, but as long as, you know, I, I just have to remind myself that I'm, I'm doing this because of the love and the passion that God has given me for art and for acting. And, um, I think that he, he understands, you know, the struggles that we go through in the most intimate ways possible. And he knows where your heart is. And he knows your intentions. So even if it's misunderstood by other people, that's okay. Because ultimately, it only matters what he thinks. And you have to learn to drown out all of the voices of what other people are saying you should and shouldn't do. 
Jesus had to deal with it. So exactly, <laughs> he had his haters. So yeah, we got to be able to handle it too. So.